this is well and truly the end of the harvest. Might be able to hear chainsaws in the background. I guess I have a neighbor not too far away who's probably cutting up firewood for winter. Uh, last night we had our coldest night so far. This is October 27th and it went to minus one. Um, at least it went to minus one over at my house. I, down at ground level it was probably even colder than that so I'm out salvaging what can be salvaged. I always procrastinate and now I have two frozen garden hoses but it is supposed to moderate and we're supposed to have heavy rain in a couple of days. The trail end of what was Hurricane Patricia I think the one that was so strong and hit Mexico. Well it has come across the US and is coming across land and gonna get to us. My uh, red flowering horse chestnut tree never has a great deal of, of uh, horse chestnuts on it. I think that is all except for one that I have up at the house this year. I like to plant them in the in the hoop house before the ground freezes and if they come up in the spring I put them in a pot and give them to somebody. Strange thing about them though, I noticed this a few years ago, when you take one out of the husk and it's like that, I thought well that'll dry that way. Not so. It will all turn like this mahogany part here over the next few days just leaving it sitting on a windowsill and it'll look just like the other ones. Anyway I cut down the last of the Swiss chard and I cut it right off this time. Usually I was just taking a leaf here and there but I do very much if anything else grows this fall. And the turnips, I've pulled up what's left of the turnips. The tops have been eaten by some kind of a creature so the the uh, hens will get the tops. I won't have any turnip greens to cook. Also there is damage on some of them like this. It's some sort of a worm thing. And I have on some of them when I go to peel them I end up losing a third to a half of it because the worm has channeled inside. Now I have to get the hoop posts cleaned up and all the pots that I grew things in that haven't been emptied, get them emptied out before they freeze solid. Planning to save that soil and start a uh, squash bed next year. I have a plague of moles. Thankfully, so far, they don't do any great damage to my garden in the summertime. But they come in the hoop posts this time of year, and I see them in areas of lawn, too, little mole hills coming up. But you can see that. That is a mole underground eating the, the beet. And here's one that it uh, I almost completely finished that one, if you can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, two or three years ago I was in the hoop, the hoopos in the fall and it was just like a, a Bugs Bunny episode. I, I saw one of my beets in the ground and they're sort of jiggling back and forth. It was a very small one. Another one there, I didn't realize I had three that had been eaten. Uh, it was a very small beet, but I saw the, the plant sort of jiggling back and forth and all of a sudden it went below ground. Just like a, a cartoon. Well, I won't make you watch me do all of this. I'm going to get this stuff cleaned up and take it to the house, but it's just that I would show you this is the, the very last of the harvest. Well, that's me all decorated for Christmas. <laughs> Due to the cold weather, I checked the internal thermometer in the inside the cabin and it went to zero in there last night. I'm concerned as to what that might do to my espalettes, uh, thawing and freezing and whatever. I don't think it actually anything actually froze in there last night. There's water in the kettle and that didn't freeze. But I thought I'd better get them in the house and I'm going to bring in the uh, onions and shallots and the garlic that are still curing up in the loft. I uh, don't want to lose any of that stuff. That will, the gar onions and garlic and whatever will go on shelves in the basement and they lasted quite a while last year. You see this corner frequently when I'm doing my cooking videos, but I never show you the whole mess. <laughs> I do close-ups with the, whatever I'm working with at the time. These are the leftover from last year, uh, the Thai chilies. And getting them used down, I had a bit in another container as well, but probably don't really need to grow any next year, but I'm going to save some seed out of those and grow some because I want to make sure the, the seed stays viable. So, And the espalettes up here, and there's some that I never got on the on the strings. There's too few to do another string, and occasionally one falls off. 
This is the one that's been drying the longest along with one of the clumps there. And at this point they're still still sort of leathery. You know, they wouldn't they're not crisp enough that they would, you know, break up in your hand, so it's it's too early to make the espalette powder. Being in the house here where it's warmer and drier, I think they'll probably dry quite fast now. I finally found a use for the nice wooden bucket that I bought at the uh, Ross Farm Museum in Nova Scotia a couple of summers ago. Don't know if our friend Cooper 68 made that or not, but he's one of the Coopers that works at the farm. And I love the bucket. I just use it as a, an ornament, I guess, in the in the cabin. But I had more than would fit into my basket and didn't want to make two trips, so I've made use of it. This one is half full of onions, and then on top of it is a little bit of garlic that I grew, and a few shallots that I uh, seem to have cured quite nicely. They're very solid. I always thought I had to use shallots first, I guess. I thought they would spoil before onions, and maybe they will, I don't know. Well, if there's only a few there, I'll use them up quite quickly. And the, on the onions were just called yellow onions, or yellow Canada onions, or something like that. There's nothing wrong with them, they have a lovely flavor. I'm not impressed with the size, but then the there was a, a difference in how I grew them. These were grown outside, and the uh, Spanish onions that I grew a year ago were grown in the hoop house. But I don't like the shape of them when you when you go to to peel them. It's uh, to cut cut them up and use them. It's quite difficult. They're, they're a flat disc on the bottom, and I don't know. By the time I get them peeled, it seems to me I've I've wasted part of the onion. But they will all be used. Right down to the wee ones here. You know, Number of those I saved them all and they seem to have dried quite nicely. So that basket's quite heavy. Gracious, I don't know, Ten pounds I guess. And as I said, this is half full of onions again, so they're on the way to spend the winter or the winter until they're used on a shelf down in the basement. Um, I haven't planted garlic yet. I did one search online to find this variety, which I like called Northern Quebec. Uh, four or five very large cloves. One, two, yeah, that one only has four, four cloves in there. One's bigger than the other three, but they only have four or five cloves per head. And I wasn't able to uh, find any. All I did was a, a search because I couldn't remember where I bought them at last year. I bought them at a couple of different places, so I may have to bite the bullet and uh, order some other variety, probably from Vessies. They hopefully still have some left. Getting close now to the 1st of November. I want to get it in the ground here pretty soon. But there's only enough there that I don't want to plant any of mine because I'll be using all of that this winter. There isn't that much to begin with. Well, there is that part of the harvest in. Time to clean up the hoop house for another year. An hour and 45 minutes worth of work. Speed it up with time lapse to a minute and 45 seconds, I guess. Unfortunately, I couldn't use all of that material that I was taking off of the smart pots and, and whatever. There had been so much mold and possibly blight in there and whatever that I couldn't put it in the compost piles. Just had to be discarded. This is one frame taken every second. 3,600 and some odd frames altogether. Played back at 60 frames a second, I think.
All together that took about two hours, an hour and 45 minutes, but at least that's done for another year. Still more work to be done in here before the weather gets really cold. But uh, everything pretty much had perished, so it was time to, to get it out of here, I guess. My artichokes are down here. I'm going to be putting um, the old uh, frame thing that I made last winter. Cold frame is the word I'm trying to search for. Not very fancy rig, but I'm going to try to cover those up and see if they'll last through the winter in the ground. I've always taken them in the house in a huge pot. And it's just getting too heavy for me to handle anymore, so they either make it or they don't make it. I managed to harvest two small cabbages in the process. Enough to make a good sized batch of coleslaw this evening, I guess. And the only other thing that I'll, well, a couple other things I guess I'll still have to do. The two uh, fig trees still have a few leaves clinging to them, so I'll wait another week or two before I give them their winter protection. And as you can see off to the side over here, those are the alpine strawberries. Some of the leaves are starting to die, but I'm going to wait until they die back further before I clip them back. Actually, there's still a few. Uh, bright strawberries on them. I've been picking a few here, there, and everywhere. I'll show you where I put that pile of uh, potting soil outside. I guess that'll finish for today, anyway. Well, I guess, as I've said before, I plan to establish a bed here in the spring to grow my squash in. It's a nice sunny area, hoping I'll get a better squash crop. But that's everything out of the potting pots, uh, both flowers and vegetables and whatever for this year. I think except the window boxes on the cabin and one planter up at the house. But anyway, I just leave it there over the winter. I meant to say when I was inside the hoop house there, the reason I bring all of those uh, smart pots and geo pots uh, back inside and just lay them on top of the ground for the winter, they have to be stored somewhere. And my theory, anyway, is that all the sunlight on them all winter will sort of solarize them and might kill off any blight or mold or whatever that is on the clinging to the pots. No idea if that's the truth or not, but that's what I keep thinking. So that's why they are there. It's November 5th, and I'm getting around to putting the last couple of clips together to finish off this video. Yesterday, the 4th, I managed to get the second... Uh, chicken coop cleaned out, a nice fresh bedding in there for the all the hens and roosters and whatever. This is that pile of uh, soil potting mix from all of this year's containers and I'm trying to remember exactly how many, five or six wheelbarrow loads of the dressing out of the, out of the chicken coop and I'll just leave it piled up like that over the winter uh, in the spring after it's had a chance to weaken some. I will uh, mix it all together before I turn this into a bed to uh, grow my squash in next year. I just thought of something, the title of this video, I hadn't explained earlier, is for Elise Joseph and anybody else who is a Game of Thrones fan. Uh, the books written by George R. R. Martin and the movie series made by, I think it's HBO in the in the U.S. Anyway, I, I know Elise likes them very much, and so do I, and uh, Winter's Coming is something that's said frequently throughout the series. As I said earlier in the video, I'd have to place an order with Vessies to get uh, garlic to plant this year, and when I went online to to uh, place my order, of course, it's very late in the season. I think they originally they had five different varieties of hardneck uh, garlic and it was down to maybe three I guess to select from and I selected one called Siberian and uh, the write-up says full of flavor grows milder in storage larger bulbs with a stunning rich burgundy purple skin each containing about six easy to peel cloves thrives in cold climates and is a great choice for those in cold winter areas, uh, approximately five to seven cloves, uh, seven to nine bulbs per pound. And the rest of it, I guess the right up there is just telling you how to plant it. Well, basically prepare a bed and stick it in there, I guess. Anyway, I got nine um, heads in the pound that I bought, and I have broken one of them apart already. Uh, it had ten cloves in it, some of them not very big, and I managed, just in breaking it apart, the skin came off of 
some, so I'll probably plant it anyway, stick it in the ground, see what happens, because I've got my work cut out for me. I still have eight heads to go through, so it's going to be going to be quite a bit of garlic for me to, to plant, and uh, I think I'm planting it in two uh, four-foot square raised beds. At least I have two beds prepared for it, so once I get this all broken apart, I'll take you over and show you where I'm planting it. This is one of those four-foot square raised beds. Uh, this one has got asparagus in it. Eight crowns uh, that have been there for, I don't know, four or five years anyway. Got a decent crop off of them this year. And eight more crowns that I planted this year that will be planted this past spring. That will be another two or three years before you can harvest from them. But all I've done here is I've put a wheelbarrow full of the barn dressing of that second chicken coop and spread it. Uh, can't till it in here at all. It just has to act as a, as a mulch. Did that last year to this bed, and it really seemed to work quite well. Um, can't till it in because you don't want to disturb the, the crowns of the uh, asparagus. That's what you're trying to do, get them established so that you can harvest from them two or three years from now. Anyway, I'll take you over and show you the, one of the two beds that I'm putting the garlic in. It's just the same size and everything as this bed. Uh, I have mixed in the wheelbarrow full of dressing a little bit on that bed. I think I have a lot more garlic than I'm going to plant. There's more cloves in these heads of garlic than I usually use. And that's it all broken up. And the curious part, I mean, it's all supposed to be like this, purple. There were two heads that were brownish yellow like that. I'm going to plant it all. They're not spoiled. They're not soft or anything. They're as firm as can be, but it's hard to believe that they're the Siberian variety. However, I'm sure it'll grow garlic, so I will plant it. I didn't count how many cloves I've got there, but a lot. Um, what I do to plant them, I took first, I, I, as I said, I put a wheelbarrow full of the chicken coop dressing on this bed. And I didn't want to mix it in completely because I don't want it to be down in the ground where the clove is going to be. I don't want it to burn the clove before it gets a chance to start to grow. So I mixed it into the surface using a garden fork. I just put the fork in and twisted and went around and then I used the back of a rake to, to tamp everything down. And for measurement, I don't do anything terribly accurate here. I use my dibble. I uh, haven't taken a measuring tape and measured to see what that is, but I use that top reference there. Uh, each one of the holes is that deep and they are that far apart in a row and the rows are that far apart this way. So altogether in this bed I get 30 holes. Uh, so with two beds that will be 60 and I'm sure I have a lot more than 60 cloves. I will keep planting the, the largest ones I guess and the smaller ones I'll either use or discard. But a simple matter to plant them anyway. I just drop it down in a hole, the hole being, I, know, I guess that must be at least six inches deep. That might be deeper than is recommended, but I, I always plant it this deep. My reasoning behind it, I planted it shallower years ago. It all came up and grew nicely, but it also falls over in, in wind here in the summertime. So I like to have mine down a bit deeper. It, it uh, makes the plant that much sturdier. So I won't uh, make you watch me fill in 60 holes. I guess that concludes this video. Uh, when I went online with Vessies this morning to uh, print out the description of the Siberian garlic, I noticed that they have absolutely no garlic left now. All five of their varieties, they say, are sold out. So I was very fortunate that I placed my order when I did place it. And I guess Vessies must have realized the urgency of getting it here and getting it in the ground. Because within three days of placing the order, I had the garlic. So we'll have to wait till spring to see how Siberian garlic survives the winter. But I think Siberia just about described this place last winter. So I think it'll probably do very well. Thank you very much for watching.